Welcome to the end of the fireworks show on another highly questionable week. What do you like, Bomani, today? Trying to figure out how much credit you give somebody for beating the Dolphins. <laughs> Dale, papi. It's a d if the Cardinals make the playoff due to the win they were gifted last night. Yeah, it kind of is because the point is to get this stuff right. The technology allows you to get it right. The appeals process allows you to get it right. And they got everything wrong last night. Let's check in with this game here. You've got a situation where it's tied, two outs, man on first. That should be a ground rule double. Actually, that should be an automatic double. That runner by rule is supposed to stop at third base period and the game is supposed to continue but the reds didn't appeal it fast enough the left fielder didn't react there they couldn't hear the phone ringing in the dugout because it was so loud by the time they objected the umpires were gone and the scheduling and logistics makes this such that they can't really keep playing that game but money i don't know what you do other than eat it well, the thing is they play 162 of these things right so in the error term you kind of have stuff like this but you got to wonder number one how your man wasn't out there acting a royal fool immediately you're a baseball manager that's in the job description go out there act a royal fool the best part of this though the cardinals and the ups Chuck the deuce and rolled out. They weren't sticking around to find out what happened at all. Where did they have to get to that the Reds weren't invited? I don't like exposing my friend here, but I can't help him when he says your man needs to get out there and act the fool. I don't know who your man is. Can you name the Reds manager? Because I don't know his name either. Why did you have to bring me up in this? All you had to say is you didn't know who he was. <laughs> I'm just trying to ask why your man could come out there and act up. <laughs> we still don't know. The last night's win proved that the Bengals are getting it together. I mean, the Bengals beat the Dolphins when they were the home team, and it was a Thursday night game. I mean, you can only give them so much credit for this, especially in a game where the Bengals kept getting to the red zone and could not score touchdowns. What I felt like in watching that is Andy Dalton has the cheat code. If nothing else seems to be going, I'll just throw the ball to A.J. Green. I'm pretty sure this guy could do that. I know anybody could do that with A.J. Green. In fact, the only difference that I see between Ryan Tannehill and Andy Dalton is the existence of A.J. Green. That's all we saw last night. There was no reason to watch that game for just about anyone outside of those markets to see anything special except for one guy trampling the Dolphins secondary. A.J. Green, as good as they get. And if you want to see Trampler, you can see what Ryan Tannehill has seen for the last four years and change, which is his offensive line being trampled because it happened again. Keep in mind, by the way, that's an offensive line where they have spent four first round wow, picks. Wow, you see that? Bomani, four first round picks on the Hold offensive up, look line. Hold on, look, look, like, yeah. it's almost like he plays on the same team as Dunlap, like he a double agent. That's a double team, and it's an offensive line. They got some people injured with four first rounders on it. Do you expect to see Josh Gordon play in the NFL ever again? I do expect it because he's young and he's talented and we tend to give those guys chances over and over and over again. He led the league in receiving, playing in only 14 games with Brandon Whedon as his quarterback, which is as big an achievement as anyone has ever had in this sport. But this made me heartbreaking sad to see that he clearly doesn't have any control over his addiction when he's checking himself back into rehab right as these precious Sundays begin and after missing so much time, he has no no control over the things happening with him. I know a lot of you think that he's just throwing away talent. I see a guy who's caught by an illness. Well, one thing we also don't know if there's anything else coming from the NFL that this is getting out ahead of. He made this decision on his own, but who knows what precipitated this. Now, the only thing I can think about in this is hoping that the dude winds up doing better because whatever it is that he needs to sue that keeps taking him back to places that he doesn't need to be if he wants to play football, those things appear to be very, very strong. Maybe some team at some point will give him a chance on a minimum salary salary deal maybe but I can't even get that far down the line the question is even not necessarily whether or not the NFL is ever going to want him again is he going to want to come back because it's not certain that he and playing football go well together Omani we know where this is going to end right this is going to end Jerry in Jones. Canton no not Jerry Jones I was going to say the Patriots I was going to say maybe Jerry Jones but you can see it all being cleaned up and all of a sudden he's Randy Moss in a Patriots uniform <laughs> Should Alabama keep their best player off of the team for carrying a gun without permit? His name is Tim Williams. He is a pass rusher. He and a friend were caught in a car where Tim Williams had a gun without a permit. There was also marijuana in the console, but they said that that wasn't theirs. That belonged to their friend named Brandon Chicken.
<laughs> right. Now, as for the gun, should Adam Alabama kick him off the team? That's one of the dumber things I've ever heard. Maybe if you want to suspend him, that's fine. But the reality is, if he has the gun and the permit, we're not talking about anything. So what's the part that offends you? Is it the gun? Because the gun, clearly not that big a deal. Constitution. Is it not having a permit? If so, we're talking about paperwork. He's their best player. He's valuable. And if you're punishing him, you're punishing him for this getting out in public and it being a bad public relations hit. Keep in mind, Alabama's done a real good job for being as great as they are and having very few incidents like this around their huddle. But beyond that, I really do feel like we're burying the lead. Two guys had a story to tell the police officers about whose marijuana that was. And the name they came up with was Brandon Chicken. I'm guessing that we can't find that in a directory anywhere near the city of Alabama, anywhere near the campus, anywhere near that car. Where can we find someone named Brandon Chicken? I don't know, but it wasn't a marijuana charge. Looked like Brandon Chicken did the job. Well, you know, Brandon Chicken is a, is a good guy, but I prefer his brother, Rotisserie. <laughs> really? We're going to do this? Really? Why are you laughing? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Is Richard Sherman being too hard on the NFL? Richard Sherman is someone you should listen to on just about any subject matter involving the NFL. And basically, he's talking about a fractured trust issue between the players and the entire league. Listen to him here. We really don't have reason to trust the NFL, and, and I, I don't think they could they mind either way. Um, at the end of the day, they're going to do what they have to do to make their money and to make as much money as they can for the owners. And our union is going to do what they can to protect the the interests of the players and, and the rights of the players and, and help them make as much money as possible. That's the relationship we have with the league is it, you know, they're going to use us until, until it's time, until our time is up and then they're going to find somebody else. How can you dispute any of that? Disposable bodies that aren't cared about very much, given that it's a violent sport and given that you've seen that the concussion issue is something that has smeared the entire league and given that the commissioner of the league is so interested in protecting the image of the league that he tramples some of the rights of its misbehaving players because the image is what comes ahead of the belief that you need to protect the players. Look, here's one thing about the 21st century. Any romance that existed between the relationship between the player and the owner is gone. Players are more more aware than ever of their existences as commodities. They get that. They may have this love affair with fans, but the idea of the love affair with the teams, that's probably going to be shaky from here on out. So what he said, honestly, is in no way controversial. But on top of it, I think he makes a subtle and important point. It's not so bad that this is the relationship. They're trying to get theirs. We're trying to get ours. There's no need for us to lie about it. Yeah, I think that he left something out that he wanted to say to the league. What else? Oh, there you go. That's what yeah, he wanted I mean, to say. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> You're I mean, waiting all week for some reason to dial that up. I mean, yeah, that's what he said. Coming up next on Highly Questionable. Everybody doubted me. Um, I even doubted myself. James told me I could go on to become the best player in the world, and I didn't believe it. The, the moment I believed it was when I was standing on top of that podium uh, collecting my trophy in Switzerland at the Ballon d'Or. My Sons TV show is brought to you by Domino's. Order online at dominos.com. Joining us at the beach today is Carly Lloyd. She's a really good soccer player, world player of the year. She's got a book out. Let's talk to her. Can you explain, for those who don't know your story, can you explain where and how things fell apart with your family? Well, I think it's, you know, it, it, it's a, a very uh, lengthy conversation. But, you know, basically, in a nutshell, this, you know, did kind of start um, as I was getting onto the national scene. I think my parents did everything they could um, to lay the foundation for me. As a youngster, they provided me you know, with support. They put me on the best teams. They sacrificed their time, their money uh, to do all of this. And then as I started to get older, I wanted to make my own decisions. I wanted to become an adult. Um, I think that they were trying to control the whole situation and, you know, really didn't want to let go. I was the oldest. Um, I think it's hard uh, as a parent, I'm sure, to, you know, not let your kid fail, maybe make some bad decisions. Um, and it's also hard to, to really kind of know and understand what a professional athlete is going through. I think it's, you know, there's not too many people that really understand uh, the platform that you're on. and. Um, Basically, we just started butting heads. You know, it started off from 
me, you know, not wanting to be with uh, my mom's uh, attorney that she worked for in the beginning, Rich, um, you know, making that decision. And I started making these decisions on my own, and it, it started to really cause us to butt heads over the years. Well, before the book was released, did you decide whether or not to let them know that this was coming? Yes, I did, actually. Um, I emailed my mom and dad and, and let them know and uh, to let them know that I'd send them a copy if they'd like one. And um, they wrote back. My mom wrote back and, um, you know, was appreciative that, that I did that. And um, so, yeah, I mean, hopefully things can, can kind of work out in the future. Was there any one breaking point? Your father kicked you out of the house, right, in 2008. Was there anything there that happened that was the last straw? Um, I mean, that was, that was pretty hard, but, you know, he, he kicked me out. I got all my things out, and then I, you know, went and played in the Olympics and came back, and we had a family party at the house, and I acted as if nothing really happened. Um, and then I bought uh, a house a couple towns over, and, uh, you know, none of my family really um, showed up. And I think that was, that was kind of, you know, it for me. Um, you know, I was, I was in tears closing on my house, my first house, which was a big deal. And um, that was really kind of when everything started. Is that the loneliest you were? Because obviously one of the great things about your journey is getting to share the experience with others. When did you feel loneliest? When did you feel least supported? Well, my family meant everything to me growing up. I was, you know, I was, I was missing out on family functions, but if I was home and I was available, I was over my aunts, I was spending time with my family. Uh, my family meant everything to me. And so to go from that to then on your own, not spending Thanksgiving with them, not spending Christmas with them, um, n no holidays, you know, not sharing an Olympic um, gold medals with them or World Cup wins. Yeah, it was it was it was heartbreaking. Um, I think that this this situation made me incredibly strong. Uh, not only was I faced with a lot of obstacles on the field and off the field, but this personal situation was extremely extremely difficult for me. There would be nights where I'm laying in bed and thinking about it and, and you know, crying. Well, what's going to happen with that wedding? You didn't go to your sister's wedding. What's going to happen with your wedding? Are they going to be invited? Like, is there going to be some healing here? I know you're, you say you're hopeful, but is there anything actively being done to warrant that hope? No, uh, they're, not, they're not invited to the wedding. Um, you know, it's, again, it's, it's another tough moment that uh, my family won't share in. But I think, you know, at some point when things settle down, yes, um, I would like to figure things out. Um, you know, my sister did reach out to me. I think she read the book. So I would, you know, like to sit down when, when you know, post-wedding and, and try to, you know, figure all this out and reconcile. Is there any one person along the path that you sort of want to hit with hissing defiance because they doubted you and you became best in the world is there any you know somebody who cut you somebody who told you you weren't going to be good enough is there any one person who stands out above all chris petroselli on the under 21 team he cut me and i've been emailing with chris i've seen chris and i've thanked him I've, I've thanked him for his honesty because it was a big turning point in my career greg ryan although he may not have liked me on some days and liked me on some some other days um he made me stronger he gave me the chance he gave me the opportunity with Pia, she loved me, then she benched me, and then, you know, she made comments about me uh, at the World Cup. You know, I had a joyous time with Pia, and she respected that I turned my, my situation into a positive in 2012 Olympics. Um, so, no, I mean, I, I can't pick out anybody. I think the whole entire journey, everybody, everybody doubted me. Um, I even doubted myself. James told me I could go on to become the best player in the world, and I didn't believe it. The, the moment I believed it was when I was standing on top of that podium uh, collecting my trophy in Switzerland at the Ballon d'Or. So, no, I mean, I'm, I'm happy and um, just want to keep getting better. I have another cycle in me and um, just want to enjoy the ride. Carly, my father usually comes in here with the most difficult of questions. Go ahead, Papa. Uh -oh. What do you got for it? What will you do on a perfect date with your fiancé, Brian? Perfect I date. You, I told you the hard uh, stuff was coming. <laughs> Probably go to a movie, uh, maybe grab some dinner. You know, we like to catch up. We don't see each other very often. So dinner, movie, relax. Um, you know, if we're at the beach, 
Maybe go to the beach, but that's about it. Okay. Something special that you like to eat? Oh, wow. My father's Good got food. follow ups. Good food. Okay. Good food. All right. All right. Okay. There you go. The height of romance. Carly, thank you for being on with us. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Gracias. Gracias. Fattening Carly. food after all that training. Fattening food. <laughs>
there's some explanation for why and how that happened, right? That I don't know what it is. But Monty, are you intrigued? I thought she was going to fall. Yeah. Like I was really getting excited right. every time you pull one of those things away. Right. And she just kept hovering in the air. Right. What's that I, all about. I know. We make fun of magic around here. Don't you guys have a video you can play now of us, you know, laughing at somebody doing magic poorly? Uh, Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. You want to see a bat magic trick? Yeah, that's yeah, what we want to see. Yeah, I'll show it to you. That's what we want to see. Yes. 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 A failed magic trick is what we want to see. Yes, this is what we were expecting. Look how happy this makes Bomani. Look. Yes. I yes. can't even watch it anymore yes. because yes. it's so awful. Yes. Ow. Yes, that's, that's what we were expecting. That's so much better. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday. Gracias. See you at Lunas. Hey, we still get paid, yeah? <laughs> we do still Even get paid. Even when we suck, we, we still got, get we paid. That's paid. a nice we job. Best part of the job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Contract.